Thank you, Dr. Lee. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this wonderful meeting. And here, uh, my, here is my financial disclosures. And as you, there, as you know, there are lots of unanswered questions. Uh, as initial treatment, which one is better, anti-VGF monotreatment or combination treatment using anti-VGF plus photodynamic therapy? And is there any prognostic factor in terms of ICJ and OCT features as well as choroidal morphology? Is there any difference between different anti-VGF drugs? What's the optimal dosing? And how can you determine non-responder or poor responder to a given drug and consider switching to other drugs or photodynamic therapy? How many PDTs can be applied safely without significant complications? What's the role of safety enhanced PDT or laser treatment? As you know, that in the last year, we heard the one-year results of two big randomized clinical trial, Everest 2 and Planet study. The results are somewhat contradictory, making things more complex. In Everest 2 study, they tested the efficacy and safety of Renivismab monotreatment compared with Renivismab plus photodynamic therapy. The treatment was given on PRN basis. And here are results. Overall, the Renivismab therapy achieved high visual outcome. And combining PDT with Renivismab resulted in additional visual improvement. 8.3 letters versus 5.1 letter, and complete polyp resolution with fewer radimismab injections than with ranibismab monotreatment. 5.2 injections versus 7.3 injections. However, still many clinicians concern about the PDT-related complications. We performed a retrospective study to investigate the long-term treatment results, nine-year treatment results, using PDT alone or combination treatment initially, followed by additional PDT application and or anti-VGF monotherapy on PRM basis. And 47 PCBIs were included. When you look at the visual outcome, visual acuity improved at one or two year, was maintained until five years, then gradually decreased. As you see the, when you see the graph, progressive visual loss did not occur after five or six years of follow-up, compatible with other previous studies. And during nine years of follow-up period, a mean of 23 anti-VGF injections were given, and a mean of two PDT was applied. One session in 40%, two sessions in 30%, and three sessions in 20%, and four or five sessions in the remaining 10%. And when you look at the required injection number in the later stage, later part of the study period, or the final visual acuity, they are somewhat different according to the PDT application number. So patients treated with multiple PDTs initially received more anti-VGF injections later and had poor final visual acuity. This may imply that the multiple PDTs affected negatively or Poor responders to PDT also responded poorly to anti-VGF injections. I believe that the PDT is still a viable treat treatment option in polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. However, multiple PDT resulted in cumulative damage to the surrounding choroid, choroidal ischemia, VGF obliteration, inducing more malignant or bizarre pattern of polyps or nevascularization, fibrous sculling, and atrophic changes of retinal pigment epithelium. 
So I always try to limit the application number of PDT. And if unavoidable the repeat PDT, I tried to use the selective PDT, which was also used in the Everest 2 study or some reduced fluence photodynamic therapy. My preference is deferred PDT. PDT may be reserved as a rescue treatment in patients with active polyps and a limited response to anti-VGF treatment. This strategy was tested in Planet study. In Planet study, all patients initially received three monthly afrivastab injection, and at week 12, they were randomized into two arms. Regardless of the random the study arms, patients who showed good response to afrivastab monotreatment continued to anti-VGF afrivastab monotreatment with extended injection intervals, two months, bimonthly injections. However, patients who showed some suboptimal responses to afrivastab injection received intensive anti-VGF treatment, monthly injection, and active PDT in patients in, included in the rescue treatment arm. And here are results. Afrivastab monotreatment resulted in an improvement in BCVA of 10.7 letters, and there was no significant difference between groups. And more than 85% of patients did not require any rescue treatment, and more than 80% of patients had no active polyps. However, as you know, in this study, the fixed dosing was used, and approximately 80% of patients treated with three monthly injections followed by bimonthly injection, a mean of eight injections. The question is, the initial visual gain can be maintained with acceptable injection frequency thereafter. The several extension studies on neovascular AMD commonly revealed that there was an incremental decline of initial visual gains with less intensive treatment. I, think, I believe that the PCB represents a type 1 neovascularization. However, there are some differentiating features from the age-related macular degeneration. In fresh PCV, the exudative changes originated from polyps, not from the entire abnormal vessels. And these polyps may regress spontaneously with resolution of serous changes, transforming into branching vessels, growing continuously, forming new polyps at the end. So the region enlarged over months, years, or decades. So PCV lesion follows a remitting lapse in course, clinically associated with chronic multi-frequent exudative changes. Here are interesting case. During more than 15 years of follow-up that uh, you can notice, you can see the development of new polyps here and there. Some of them regressed spontaneously, and some polyps are located extraphobial area, the exudative changes did not involve the phobia. And the final visual acuity is very surprisingly 0.8. This is very happy case. So during anti vgf treatment, we may expect spontaneous or drug-induced regression, which occur in about 30 to 40% of cases. The anti vgf treatment might be able to control the macular fluid before polyp regression. However, this is not the case in many patients, and the polypoidal lesion proliferates around the original site and requiring continuous injections. Furthermore, branching vascular network may leak in chronic recurrent cases, and the, in particular, exudation in the absence of definite polyps was seen in about 20 to 40 percent of cases successfully treated with PDT within two years. Probably PDT may trigger the branching vascular network inactive neovascularization, and this lesion may evolve into active neovascularization. The other thing is that the, when you look at the Everest 2 study, injection frequency was somewhat diverse in the monotreatment arm. So, 
about 25% of patients received only three to four injections, including three loading injections, while about 30% patients received a nearly monthly injection. PCV lesion is actually very heterogeneous in terms of polyp size, number, the polyp structure, branching pattern, total lesion size, lesion location, and also the corridor features are different between the individuals. The sub in one core, the sub corridor thickness was greater than 200 micrometer in 60% with a mean value of 340 micrometer while less than 200 micrometer in 40% with a mean value of 150. So many experts try to identify some prognostic factor, angiographic and OCT features, which may provide prognostic value and improve the guidance for optimal management. It's not easy. PCB with the small polyp and small lesion size responds very well to anti vgf as well as combination treatment. And some studies show that PCB lesions associated with corridor hyperpermeability and or increased corridor thickness do not respond favorably to anti-VGF drug. But the recent study showed that Afribasav is also effective in these eyes. So polyps with the resembling grape clusters are active and associated with more potent neovascular drive and frequently evolve into typical corridor neovascularization so that the eye always avoid the PDT with these patterns of polypoidal lesions. However, here, are, here is a very interesting case. The polyp is very small, lesion size is very small, and the lesion looks very benign. However, 24 monthly ranibizumab injection was performed, but still there is a, a fluid. I applied PDT. It was effective initially, just for one month. Two months later, fluid came back, and I switched into Afribasep. Monthly injection was, injections were required to control the macular fluid. So it's very difficult to predict their response to a given treatment before. So in conclusion, my preference is anti vgf deferred PDT. I always start with anti vgf and consider some different drugs. For example, in cases with increased corridor thickness, I prefer Afribasap. And try to determine responsiveness to a drug, including switched drugs, at 6 to 12 months. Estimate the required injection number at 12 months in responders and keep on anti vgf in patients treated with acceptable injection frequency. And consider PDT in non-responders or cases requiring too frequent injections. For recurrent regions after photodynamic therapy, it's a different story. I always try to restrict the application number of PDT and anti vgf was definitely first-line treatment. In refractory cases, I try to the selective PDT or laser or safety-enhanced half-dose PDT before applying standard photodynamic therapy. Thank you for your attention. Uh, any question? I'd like to give the first question. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. for your excellent uh, presentation. And you talk the outcome of visual acuity. How do you think about the fluid? Um, PDT is better for regress the fluid or anti VGF. But I think that there, if you mean that the PDT can regress, close the polyp more effectively, uh, thereby the fluid associated with the polyps will gone the reabsorbed more efficiently then yes but as i said in the, my presentation the fluid came from also the branching vascular network component so in those cases that the, i never use photodynamic therapy because that the, it did not work but the vgf works well yeah yes yes thank you any other question Okay, thank you. Then in the interest of time, we will move on.